Now that you've made your video in Loom, what do you do next? You need to edit it and organize it in Loom. This video will show you how to do just that. But before we get going, please hit that like button below. And while you are doing that, also take a moment to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my latest tutorials. So now that you have finished making your video in Loom, this video will show you how to organize and edit your videos. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into your web browser and go to loom.com, L-O-O-M.com. Once you are there and logged in, you will see a link across the top that says Personal Library. You want to click on that, and that will take you to your main screen where it shows all the videos you've created, has any folders that you've made, and so on. The first thing is, you will see a bunch of your videos listed below. So the first thing I want to show is how to actually edit those videos. So click on a video, and it will take you to its editor or the player where you can actually watch the video. And again, as I mentioned in my previous video, that you can speed it up. And this isn't for everybody, it's per viewer. So if you want to watch the video and speed up your video, you click the 1.2, the 1.5, and so on to watch it at a faster rate. On the right hand side, you're going to see a couple of different settings here. The first is you can copy the link so that you can send it out to your students. You can post it in Google Classroom or just email it out to students. You can control the sharing of it so you can make it public where anybody could actually find your video just doing a Google search or it's just by sharing a link only. You can even add a password to the video so if you really want to lock it down or if you're showing stuff that's copyrighted and you want to keep it more protected so it falls into fair use guidelines you can add a password to that. A little further down you've got your settings. You can enable or disable comments. You can adjust and turn on and off email notifications. You can allow emoji reactions, so if they want to give a thumbs up, you'll see over underneath the video that there's a couple different emojis that students can click on. You can either keep those on or off. You can keep animated thumbnails. You can use their branded player, which I would suggest. You can make it so that the viewer can download the video, and also the viewer can see the analytics, meaning how many people watched it, how many people commented, or did different things. So if you changed any of those, you can hit the save, or if you didn't change any of them, just hit the cancel button. The biggest feature in their editor is the trim button. So I'm going to click on trim, and this is to actually edit your video. Now, let's say there's a part of your video that you just didn't like, you tripped over your words, somebody came in and interrupted the video. This is where you can trim that out. Trimming is actually taking a section of it and removing it. So you'll see the Start Trimming button that you want to click on, and you'll see this red highlighted part. The right side is the end of the trim, where it's going to stop trimming after that. The left side is where the trimming starts. So let's say, for example, that you don't like the first, you know, 34 seconds of your video. You can move that around to where you want that trimming to be. So I'm going to choose that 34 seconds, then I'm going to tell it to remove and you'll see this remove spot right there. Now you'll see in the video that the first 34 seconds is in red and the video won't start playing till just after that. Let's say there's multiple things you want to trim. Hit start trimming again and I can take and slide that end way over if I want and then take the beginning and slide it around to where I just want. You can hit the play button so you can double check where the trimming starts to make sure you get it really fine-tuned. So if you kind of tripped over your words a few times, you can use that to kind of fine-tune where the trimming starts and ends. And you can make the trims really, really short. I mean, I can make it just so it's a couple seconds at most. And that's great, again, if you trip over your words a little bit or there was an announcement while you were making your video and you want to take that out, that allows you to do those things. But let's say we want another bigger spot. Again, click the Remove button and that spot's done trimming. And what you'll see is if I start the video just before it and hit play, it's gonna be playing along, playing along. Then you're gonna see it hit to the trim spot and it's gonna jump over. And now you'll see it's continuing on after the trim. So trimming is just removing a section of your video. And you can do that as many times as you want. 
Now, what you can also do is, let's say after the fact you didn't like a trim that you did, you can click on it, and you'll see this Remove Trim shows up. And I can just click on that, and it takes away the trim. Again, I can click on it and remove that trim. Or if you need to make an adjustment to it, you hit Edit Trim, and it'll allow you to click and drag where the trim is at the end or where it is at the beginning. And I can say Remove. And then when you're all done, you can hit Publish Changes, and it will save your video with all those trimming effects added in. Or you can go back and undo everything. Or you can go back and just return to video. And it'll ask you if you want to discard your changes, meaning you want to throw out everything you did. Or if you want to publish your changes, and it'll save all the trims that you did do. So I'm going to say Discard. The next thing you can do is you can add what's a call to action. It's kind of a neat feature, but it's also very limited. What a call to action is, is a button that shows during the video and can be clicked on to take you somewhere. So we're going to have it say test action. Tab down and we're going to say google.com is where it goes. I can click on and I can change the color of the button. I can change the text color. You can change the style of it so it can be really rounded. It can be completely squared or just have slight roundings. So when you're all set, you hit save. And then when they're watching the video, they can click on that and it'll actually take them to the website you specify. So it's kind of cool, but you can only have one of them. So it just depends on what you want to do couple other parts in this area. You have this download button where you can actually download your video. So if students want to be able to watch it offline, they can download it when they have internet. If you want to move it into a bigger video editor where you can do even more things, you can download it and then import it into iMovie, Final Cut, Adobe Audition, whatever your video editor of choice is. And in a future video, I will go through and show you how to use iMovie to do even more features when editing the video. This trimming feature works great for taking quick things out, but if you want to interject a PowerPoint presentation or photos or other things, you can actually do that in one of the video editors. You can duplicate the video, so if you need to make changes to it and want to have multiple videos, you can use that duplicate feature. Or if you really don't like the video and just want to get rid of it, you can delete it. And you can click on the share button and you can either embed it. If you have a Google site, you can embed it into your page for that. You can share it to Twitter, Facebook, copy the link, and so on. Down below it has the option to post comments so you can actually have discussions about the video. So that's the basics of the editing area. Now if I go back to my personal library, You'll see I have a couple folders up top here. The How to Use Loom is kind of the basic folder they create for you. And you'll see these three dots to the right of it. You can archive it, which will get rid of it. And you'll see it's now gone. You can create a new folder. And I can call it Test Folder. Now the neat thing is, you can move these videos. If you see, I just clicked and drag, and I can move that video right into that folder. So if you have different classes, you can create a folder for each class, like you'll see my media production class. I've got a folder for them. So any videos I've created for that class, I can put in there. You can organize it by parts of your curriculum. Up to you on how you want to organize it. But the really nice thing is when you hover over the folder, you'll see this little share folder arrow. And if you click on that, you can copy the link, and that will share out the folder. So when they click on that link, it will take them right to that folder directly. So a lot easier for sharing out specific videos that you've created. And again, if you click on the dots, you can either rename or archive it, or you can star it, which will also keep it right to the top. So if you get a lot of folders over time, it'll keep those starred folders right at the top of your list. And then if you scroll down, you will see that I have different videos I've created. And again, just click and drag to move that video into one of your folders. So that's the basics of using the Loom Editor. Again, not the most powerful, but for just doing some quick editing 
it's a really quick and easy tool to use. And also this is on how to organize your Loom library. Don't forget to check out my site at adamontech.com where you can submit suggestions or follow questions to these video tutorials. While there, you can read my writings that explore a number of topics in greater detail. You can also leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com slash adamontech. Don't forget to hit that like button below and also subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the video tutorials as I release them. So until next time, this is Adam on Tech. Signing off.